So far we've learned about translations and reflections. Now we're going to talk about rotations. Rotations is simply just rotating an object. Here's a definition. It is a transformation that turns every point a specific angle and direction about a point. Remember when we talked about in 9.1 about rotating something about the origin? That just means where you're rotating something at. But that's like the piece that you're using to spin an object. If you think of playing a game, uh, the spinner is attached at the center of the dial. That's our rotation point. Looking at the center of rotation, it's the point everything is being rotated about. So here in this picture we have point P. That's our rotation point. If you look at C, C is being rotated 90 degrees. The distance here from C to P and then C primed back to P, those two black lines should be exactly the same length. They're being rotated simply 90 degrees from C to P and C to P. Those two segments are the same and we have a 90 degree angle right there that is being rotated. Every point now would be rotated the exact same amount. Next is the angle of rotation and that's the measure of the angle that determines how far to rotate the pre-image or how, how far we're rotating it. So here we go. We have the red lines and it's being rotated 90 degrees. Fairly straightforward. Rotate a segment about a point. In this picture here, I want to rotate that segment, let's call it 50 degrees. I could rotate it any amount, but I'm just going to choose 50 degrees. The first thing we need to do is get our mark of 50 degrees. I have my compass centered at my point of rotation, which is the smiley face, and I want to measure 50 degrees. So what I'm going to do is going, as I'm going to draw in a segment which will represent my 50 degree angle. Let's start with the fact that here's the direction we're going. We're going from this back to the point of rotation and then I need to go out 50 degrees. Obviously this is really big but I wanted you to be able to see what I'm actually doing. There's my 50 degree angle. The angle right in here is my 50 degree angle. Okay, now let's do this with a little bit smaller segment. There's my black segment, which met rep or black angle that represents my 50 degrees. Now the key here is the fact that the distance from the end of the red segment back to the origin cannot change. That distance we want to maintain the same amount. As we look at our original the black dotted line from the center of rotation out to the end of the red segment it's about 4.5 centimeters. That means that when I look at the distance to the other segment here I actually need to shorten this up to 4.5. The end of that black segment will represent the end of the original red segment. Now we have to actually do the same construction again. Need to create my 50 degree angle again. So I go from the end back to the center and then out to 50 degrees. We need to ignore that first segment. Now we go ahead and measure it. Put your ruler at your center of rotation measure how long your segment is. In this case it's about 11.2. Go over to our other segment and then we just need to shorten that up to 11.2. Now we can get rid of our compass and protractor that are our ruler that are on our screen here.
and now we have our new red segment that has been rotated 50 degrees. That dotted line, that dotted line, and that dotted line have nothing to do with it. But our segment here has been rotated 50 degrees. Rotational symmetry. A figure has rotational symmetry if it can be rotated less than 360 degree and land on itself and make a perfect match. As we look at this figure on the screen here, as we rotate it, it actually can be rotated numerous times and land directly on top of itself. There's one rotation. You can see how that's going to land right on top of itself. We could rotate it again here and one more time over to here. So that object does have rotational symmetry. Now when we talk about rotational symmetry, there's a couple of words that go along with it. The first is order. Order is the number of rota rotations less than 360 that place the image back on top of itself. For example, what is the order of this two of clubs? Again, it's the number of rotations less than 360 that place the image back on top of itself. As we talk about rotational symmetry and order, here we have an example. I'll replay the one that looks like an S sideways that has an order too. Here's your original object which looks like a sideways S and watch it count the order as it rotates. There's the first one and there's the second one. It lands on itself twice. If we look at the little piece that looks like a puzzle piece, we have one, two, three for an order. It lands on itself three times. As we look at some of these other pictures, we have a propeller with four wings that are symmetric. It will land on itself four times, so on and so forth. Now the key part here is in order for an object to have rotational symmetry, it needs to actually have more than an order of one. So if you say, well, every object can be rotated around and land on itself, if that's all it can do, then it has no symmetry. It needs to actually have more than one spot where it's going to land on itself and be a perfect match. So this two of clubs has order two. Once when it rotates here, and then once when it rotates all the way back to where it began. So we would have an order of two. Next is magnitude. Magnitude is the measure of the smallest angle which will rotate the figure onto itself. What is the magnitude of this octagon? Well, first thing we need to remember is that 360 degrees is a revolution all the way around one time. So as I rotate this octagon, right there is my first stop. So what I would do is I would take 360 and divide it by 8. The magnitude for this then would be 45. At a 45 degree turn or rotation, the object is going to land back on top of itself as a perfect match. That would be the magnitude. How about a regular dodecagon? First off, how many sides in a dodecagon? If you remembered 12, good. So what is the order? The order, since it is a regular dodecagon, that means that it could rotate 12 times because each of the sides would land on itself as we go around 12 times. Then to find the magnitude, we would simply take 360, which is the degrees in a full revolution or full rotation, and divide it by 12, which is the number of times that it could actually stop. So we took the magnitude and divided it by the order. And your final answer would be 30 degrees. And there you have your magnitude. So we have an order of 12, which is how many times could the object land back on itself as you go one time around. And then we have the magnitude, which is how far does it have to turn the first, or rotate the first time before it lands back on top of itself. That is magnitude and order. 
that's it. That's the end of today's lesson. So if you have any questions, especially in this last part, because I know it can be a little bit confusing, please come to class and ask me questions, and I'll help you out.